Oh, I don't know if this is uh, probably too rude for this, but I'm going to tell the story anyway. <laughs> Paul, he was obviously viewing in his hotel room uh, the night before, and he's just talking to us. It's actually an event I'm going to name in shame. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors Podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Welcome to the first ever Business Anchors Podcast. Oh, you did that in a bit of an ASMR style then. Did I? Yeah, that was really good. Oh, would you like that? This is too weird to start the podcast. We have got quite a large following of ASMR, haven't we, Lloyd? So we, we should be. Yeah, anyway. So, what can we expect from this podcast, Dan? Um, it's going to be us basically chatting shit for an hour. Well, I would I have to say my, my notes are a bit more detailed than that. <laughs> um, so, this we're hoping it's going to be... Obviously, so if you don't know us, we're, I'm Lloyd Knowlton. I'm Dan Nelson. And uh, we are business partners and brothers that run a digital marketing agency. But that shit's boring. Yeah. Um, but we're basically talking about some businessy stuff, but I'm afraid it's not going to be one of those podcasts where it's like, oh, uh, these are the points that I'm going to implement for my business next week. <laughs> um, we're basically going to be talking about stuff that's going on behind the business, funny stories that happen. Mm. Shit stuff we do, good stuff we mm. do. Shall I? Shall I read the on, read description? The, can, can you read it so, in, a, in a radio voice as well? Because I like it when you do the radio voice. Yep, I could do that for you, Dad. Okay, <laughs> so the description that I, I actually wrote was: Business doesn't have to be boring. <laughs> business anchors Lloyd and Dan Dalton share a hundred percent honest view and how and how not to keep your business afloat. See that pun afloat because it's anchors and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Lloyd and Dan learn about business trends, business growth, and marketing whilst trying to convince each other that they know what they're doing. <laughs> May contain nuts. <laughs> okay. Um, you can turn the so radio off. So that's... Uh, I hate radio DJs. I think you do a brilliant impression, though. I just... This is one of my... So, going straight... Well, you hate, you hate people. You hate no, the people. No, no, no. Well, I'm sure they're nice people, but I hate people that just talk shit. And I think that radio DJs... We're, we're, we're literally doing that now. Mm. But radio DJs, it's their job. Mm. Their job is literally... Mm. Like, <laughs> so that was a great song there. And... Uh, <laughs> Do you know what? Today I uh, I woke up. It is a Tuesday today, and I thought, I thought, oh, Thursday, great. And I walked into work, so that having a great Thursday, and they said it's Tuesday. I said, oh, do you know what? I thought it was Thursday. And, uh, so uh, give us a call if you've ever had some funny stories where you uh, you thought think it it's, think it's Wednesday, but actually it's a Friday. You know, we'd love to hear from you from you. Oh one eight four three six two one one two nine, and uh, yeah, we'll hear your stories after a bit of Baha Men. Who let the dogs out? That's to me. That's radio. D- they just talk utter crap and make up stories, and that's their job. <laughs> yeah. I bet you want to be one, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed that, so I probably should be. But um, oh, before we get into what we're going to talk about today, everyone, before you've even uh, heard had any value from this podcast <laughs> or or enjoyed it, please subscribe <laughs> on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Leave and, us a review. Uh, and leave us a review. A five star one That'll as well. Be, not, yeah. not any of that oh, three yeah, star rubbish. Yeah. Oh, don't want any of those. Um, but yeah, so today we're actually going to be talking quite a lot about businessy events and business networking and stuff because we've been running. We've got some good stories. Yeah, we've been running our business for oh, five years? six years now. It might, I, I think it's six. Is it coming to six? In fe- February 1st, which oh. is, I mean. This one, this this is probably coming out around February first. This might be today. Who knows? Happy birthday! Or if you're listening to this at a later stage, because you've heard how brilliant brilliant this podcast is, um, enjoy. <laughs> um, so I think uh, Dan should move closer to the mic. Do you know why I think that, Dan? Because Josh had a sign up saying. Josh just had mic. a sign up saying, uh, uh, "Go close to your mic, Dan." There we go. So, is that all right? Um, Are we yeah. Good now? So we're going to be talking about business events. So, uh, but first, first, Dan. Just because just we're a bit quirky. Um, so we're going to take it in turns, each podcast, to uh, to pick a drink that we're going to be uh, drinking during the podcast. Yeah. So I'll just move away from the mic, Dan. Go just, on. just talk while I'm doing it. Talking whilst he's doing it. What are we going to be drinking? I'm back. So for, for the listeners at home, we're... Uh, there you go, Dan. Oh, thank there you. There you go. I like this drink because um, it's got a little... It's like a ring pull on the bottle. Thunderbird. Rather than a... Oh, oh did ooh, you hear that? Ooh, let me just, or a bit uh, of ASMR. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, is that satisfying? Um, so, for the listeners, this is Bundaberg Ginger Beer. Thank you. Um, What's the point of this segment again? What are we doing? Just, I just thought it'd be... 
Oh, it's a bit quirky. Oh, oh they choose a different drink each. Oh, <laughs> you are quirky, Luke. And uh, that's actually Bund- really nice. Bundaberg haven't sponsored us for this, but if there are any drinks brands out there that want to sponsor the podcast, you know, we'll happily talk about your drink. But yeah, what do you think, Dan? It's good. It mm. Tastes good. Tastes gingery, beery. I've actually been to Bundaberg in Australia uh, on my gup year. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you did a gap year. Yeah, gap year. Um, <laughs> it was actually a, a gap ten weeks because yeah. I spanked all the money I had, so then I couldn't go <laughs> yeah. for a year. But yeah, right. Let's get on to what we're talking go. about. So business networking. Mm. Um, we. What is it? What? what this is your guide to business networking. No, we <laughs> we did it a lot when we were when we first started out because when you when you're in business you don't know anyone. It's yeah. like. You're sitting at home waiting for the phone to ring and then mm. the first advice you get is you've got to go to business networking, networking every day and then you'll meet people, mm. which is which is fair enough. But mm. I don't know, what do you do you do you think it was useful for our business? Definitely when we started, um just like you said, you don't you don't you need to meet people and business networking is basically a way to do that. But I do think business networking is one of those weird situations because it's basically a group of people coming together to pretend they want to build a relationship <laughs> with you when really they just want to sell you the products or services. So yeah. it's this whole... Oh, hi guys. I really enjoy coming here at 6am on a Thursday. <laughs> just to, just to oh, chat. Oh, it's so good to chat with you. And by the way, do you want to buy that stuff that I talk about every week? Or, uh, <laughs> yeah. or No, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, let's just have a chat. Great. Exactly. Yeah. I, um, yeah, it's just a bit of a weird... Like you said, because everyone's there kind of acting like... Firstly, acting like... They've got a really big, successful business. When mm. some of them do, mm. um, most of them don't. I mean, we did. I remember turning up in a <laughs> suit and tie. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, I run a digital marketing agency with my brother. I've got no customers, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't really need the business, but just thought, <laughs> just go networking every day, just to, to, for fun, really. But yeah, a lot of it is kind of that smoke and mirrors. Every, yeah. most, most of the people are in the same thing. They're going there because they want more business, but also... Everyone's acting like they've got yeah. loads of business and yeah. they're very successful. Everyone, everyone's really busy. Do you ever <laughs> notice that? Yeah. Whenever you, uh, you, oh, how are you? What are you doing? You, oh my God, the business is busy. So busy. It's like, <laughs> if you're so busy, why the fudge are you at a that is uh, the classic networking event I every think, day? I think every networking event ever I went to, how are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm right. Um, what you been to? Oh, just, just so busy this week. Busy That's, doing what? Going I'm, to networking events? <laughs> <laughs> so busy. What about you? Yeah, I'm busy as well. <laughs> Just so busy. It's like, mm, are we though? Are we really? <laughs> but look, we are kind of shitting on it a bit. I definitely early days going out there, meeting other people um, was really important. And just building relationships in, has been really important for us. But I think my mindset, mindset kind of shifted. My mindset has shifted. My mindset has shifted. When I, before I was just going there thinking I need to meet people and sell them stuff. And then, now it's more like we just go out to fun events and make friends, which sounds well sort of cliche, mm. but you know. Yeah, I think I have to say like businessy events and business networking was much less enjoyable when you were a when suit. you're like desperate to win business mm. because you're going in there doing that thing we were talking about, going around the room. Oh, it's such a nice, sounds such a nice song. Great to be there, but really you're thinking, oh crap, no one's showed any interest in what I'm <laughs> selling them, and. Uh, if I don't bring some business in, I don't know how I'm going to pay my, my yeah. gas bill. Um, mm. Yeah, so I, I do think it is. Looking back, like, because I, I used to I used to go to a business networking thing for mm. quite a long time, didn't I? Mm. Probably like every Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. So did I when we first started. I went to one for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. My, my one, but also my one, I mean, uh, I won't name it, but it wasn't three <laughs> networking and it wasn't five networking. Um <laughs> And there's, it's a thing like you all, yeah, obviously it's one of these mm. breakfast things. So you all go in, obviously I put on, put on about a stone in a year because you eat full English <laughs> breakfast <laughs> yeah. twice a week. But, oh, that ginger beer is making me burp a bit, which isn't <laughs> ideal for recording a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Sorry if you pick that up, listeners. Bit of ASMR there, oh, my own yeah. style. Um, but yeah, for networking, there's a bit, obviously you do. You weren't going to name it, you, you just named it. Oh, um, <laughs> other, other networking <laughs> is available. Um, yeah, please don't sue us. But yeah, you do your thing at most networking events where you do your 60 seconds. Yeah, talk about it. You stand up and oh, go, I've got a massive business and do this really good stuff for businesses. <laughs> We're um, so busy. Please, please buy it because otherwise I've got to close down the business. <laughs> but you go around and it's also, 
I do think it's hard Could, because everyone, well, not everyone, but most people in that situation where they're under a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's kind of, you. You get people that are so nervous about their sixty <laughs> seconds, and it's really horrible, cringy because you think, oh my god, you are you are absolutely hating standing up yeah. and talking about your business, which most people right do now. when they're doing it for the first time. It's not. Yeah, so going through that, and I, I even felt like that a few times at the start. Yeah, um, that's horrible. But then well, in the in the network, and I went to you, you then you get three ten minute meeting i think it's 10 minutes mm. maybe it's four minutes mm. or, or or three or five yeah um <laughs> <laughs> meetings and you kind of swap business cards. oh I'll, I'll have a meeting with you yeah, yeah yeah but the only trouble is you're forcing your yeah it's that like isn't. and also if someone comes up to you go, oh do you want to have a meeting lloyd and i'm thinking i don't really want to buy your aloe vera drinks <laughs> but if i say no i'm gonna look like a complete yeah. dickhead now oh yeah tell me more Oh yeah, great mate. Yeah, I mean the last three meetings uh, that we've had this week at the other networking <laughs> events were so good. I'd love to speak about your aloe vera drinks. What um, do you What do you think about um, this whole thing of? So you're supposed to go to these. You, you meet these group of people every week. You sit down. You you know you're supposed to refer them leads. They're supposed to refer you you leads. But what about if um, some of them are shit? Like, do you really want to refer people to mm. John the um, aloe vera salesman who you know you know the aloe vera is rubbish and he is a terrible person to mm. work with just from your experience of working with you're supposed to then go in there and say yeah. how you know this this is the number one thing that i hate about networking so it's like you'll sign up to this little club half half of the people in the club probably aren't that great mm. and you wouldn't necessarily recommend to friends and business colleagues and stuff but then you go in like right who's referred yeah. who's referred John's secondhand car sales this week and it's like oh yeah I got my grand to buy mm. a secondhand car so I can look good in the group um, but obviously it's well overpriced yeah. and he, he told her to fuck off but, <laughs> um, but at least I've got the referral yeah. and yeah I just I, I never would want to be yeah. in a group where basically you all pay to be in this little group yeah. and, and that's what makes you decide who you're going to yeah. recommend to other people in business and yeah. stuff I think it's oh I was just about to say being authentic. Ah, oh, don't say it. Is... You just got to be authentic. Yeah, good buzzword. Be yourself. Do you have Do you have any funny stories from networking or anything? I mean, I've got one, but I, I want to hear if you've got a uh, or okay. A business well, event. I'll just I'll tell a story to set up Dan's story that he obviously wants to say, <laughs> and then afterwards, Dan, I'll say, "Oh, have you got any stories?" Go on, then. Good idea. Um, no, it's not really a story. I just I the the kind of people that I used to see at networking meetings it was a bit of a weird situation like I'd meet them and be get to know them after a few weeks and they've mm. got I don't know they're a business coach or something mm. it's like oh, okay yeah that's interesting yeah mm. okay and then then the next week they turn up <laughs> and they, they go change their business yeah oh I'm selling um yeah if you need any electricity <laughs> gas or broadband um, and it's one of these multi-level <laughs> marketing yeah. things where um, can I should I say the name of the the big one? Yeah, I know. One, one of them's utility warehouse. Yeah. Which is, if you go to a networking meeting, there'll be four people in the room <laughs> trying to sell you gas and electricity. Yeah. Um, and what oh. I just found strange is you get to know this person and, and they're telling you every week, like yeah. I said, like we like we yeah. were when we had no business. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, it's going really well. Yeah, yeah, had some some really good leads and done some good work. And then yeah. they come back the next week. I'm still doing that a bit. If you do want uh, coaching, <laughs> Go, yeah. but also um, got a great deal on gas this week. And I'm honestly. selling aloe vera next week. Yeah, if you sign up, you get free light bulbs this week. So um, you know, who cares about the business? And I, I don't know. Yeah. I think, I guess on to play devil's advocate, mm. you could look at it and go, oh, they're they're entrepreneurial. Yeah. And they're, oh, they've got all these, <laughs> but I think, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the harsher sounding thing is that business has failed or, or not failed, but it's hard work and you can't be yeah. able to put in the effort and mm. then you're back. Yeah. So and I'm just wondering, Dan, do you have any stories about networking? I've got a, I haven't actually. Oh, you have got one. I have oh. got one. Yeah. Yeah. But it's actually, no, it's to do with an event. It's not necessarily networking. But the, we, we keep talking about like business networking is in the groups you go to every week where you go like for breakfast. The breakfast but there is this whole yeah, other yeah. element of networking where you just go to other, like we go to loads of other events and mm. meet people and network. Yeah. Um, but there was, oh, I don't know if this is uh, probably too rude for this, but I'm going to tell the story anyway. Mm. So there was an event that I spoke at abroad in Bulgaria. Did I tell you this story? Uh, when the guy came up to me afterwards. Oh, possibly. 
Possibly. Oh, it was really cringy. It was probably my most embarrassing moment ever at speaking at an event. <laughs> so I, I, I spoke on stage at this event in Bulgaria and this, this queue of people comes up after and wants to ask me questions. And um, this one guy asked me a question about something and, I, and we, I knew we'd written an article. Do you know what I'm going to... The no, 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 I don't oh, think I have heard this. I, I knew we'd written... <laughs> so cringy. I knew we'd written an article that, that basically gave an answer to the question he asked about it's something about adding captions or something i was like oh we've written an article on that look here it is got my phone out <laughs> like in front of him clicked on um clicked on the internet and it was porn <laughs> <laughs> so so you on your phone so you just he just listened to you speaking <laughs> got called this guy's so insightful i'm gonna ask for some advice and you you just showed him some porn on your phone. Yeah, it's really impressive. That is, uh, to be honest, Dan, <laughs> I've I'm, never told you. I'm pleasantly though. surprised that you've you've uh, revealed that story to the world. I don't I think I've told anyone. To so, uh, and uh, I bet that was surely that was one of the most it awkward was moments so ever. So embarrassing. Yeah. Was he kind of like, actually? I'm all right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's one of those situations right. where. We both knew what we saw, but we acted as if we didn't. I was like, oh, well, let me just. Uh... I had that when I was um, when I was training to be a pilot. A a drone pilot. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what I tell girls when I go. Mm. Me, yeah, I'm a pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've got a Mavic Air drone. <laughs> Call myself a pilot. But when I was training, the guy. So we were. It was, it, it was in this hotel. Oh, I know you told me this. This is so embarrassing. It was in this hotel, and um, so the trainers stay in this hotel because they're not local. So we're all there. Um, was it like a middle-aged guy? Yeah, yeah, he's probably in his fifties, early sixties, mm. and um, oh god, if he's listening to this, <laughs> oh, um, no. I mean, I really enjoyed the training, and I really <laughs> liked you, but this was funny. I don't know if you know this yet. Yeah. He might be listening, thinking, "What's he going to say about me?" And now <laughs> yeah. I'm dragging it out. He's sweating. <laughs> he's shaking. What's he going to say about me? What did I do? But yeah, we. Um. So probably like the third day, it was a four-day course. He gets his laptop <laughs> out. And um, and it's on Plugs, the big screen behind, on the, on ready, the big to, screen. ready to learn some drone stuff, some theory. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, I can be 30 metres away from takeoff and have to shout, aircraft taking off. That's that's actually a real thing. Um, but yeah, so he gets his laptop out and he's kind of talking, it's warming up, talking to, to us all. And um, oh, no. and again, it is, it's porn. He was obviously viewing in his hotel room uh, the night before and he's just talking to us like, yeah, yeah, so everyone had a good night, yeah, just sleep well. Yeah, and it's just behind him on this screen. Yeah, just playing. Go, yeah, so today we're gonna be we're gonna be learning. We'll get out there with the drones. We'll have a great time. It's kind of and we're all like, yeah, you had yeah, a great yeah, time yeah, last yeah. night, uh, didn't you? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, move, move on to do something with your laptop or something. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously oh. he he went down on his laptop. Kind of, you saw a, a brief panic, but I think he definitely didn't realise it was on the screen. Oh, he didn't. So the brief oh, panic, I think, was kind of like I think he was like, oh, that was a close one. <laughs> I could have I could have connected that to the to the screen behind me. Oh, but, God. Um, yeah, so that was that was a similar yeah. story. And I remember that night, a few of us on the course had a few <laughs> drinks. Oh, drone friends. <laughs> Talk, <laughs> yeah. talking, talking drone stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, my fellow pilots. And, um, <laughs> so and yeah, sad. it was kind of like we had a couple of glasses of wine so- and everyone was kind of like, Oh, guys, did you notice? We're like, yes, we noticed. <laughs> God, we all wanted what? to say it then. The big butt on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh. Well, I couldn't I couldn't look him in the eye after that. He had a great. I, obviously, he loves these these four days when he goes to hotels away from his partner. Oh yeah, oh, yeah just working, love. Yeah, oh, it's going to be hard work, but uh, it'll be all right. Oh, um, that is so. Em- we we should definitely bring out more of these embarrassing stories because we've got. Yeah. I, what I like was that my embarrassing story was about someone else. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that was good because. Um, Obviously, yours is about you. Yeah, I mean, so bit, sorry, bit sorry uh, guy in Bulgaria that saw that. Yeah, I am um, talking about cringy things. Not quite as cringy as showing porn on your phone, but <laughs> I, uh, some of you listeners or viewers may know that I used to dress very formally when we started the business. <laughs> yeah, but Lloyd, that made you look like so, a businessman. Well, that was exactly my logic. So I've spoken about this. I think at an event I was speaking mm. about this. Oh, oh, oh events. Oh, we're talking about business <laughs> events. Um. And there's definitely, if there was a graph, there's mm. a curve, like, and it crosses over of like how much I knew what I was doing <laughs> and how formally I was dressed. <laughs> so when we started the business, I had no fucking idea what I was doing. But, 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 top button done up, tie on, jacket, <laughs> trousers, all freshly dry cleaned. Couldn't afford the dry cleaning, but got yep. it done. Yeah. Um, 
and then as I started to get to know what I was doing a bit, you know, the tie came off. Yeah, I'm yeah, it's cool. Pretty, pretty good at business over here. Bun popped open. No tie, yeah. Yeah, pretty relaxed. Yeah, not desperate for business. No, I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm doing. I've got, got a couple of £200 deals in, so uh, I'll be all right for the next three days. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, gradually. Now, now, I mean, now can if I you're just... viewing the podcast, you can see... Uh, Lloyd's, in a high vis, compl- Lloyd's in a high-vis jacket. Well, it's not a high-vis. Well, no, not a high-vis jacket. He's got um, high-vis stripes on it. Which is and the point is, now I look terrible, but I know what I'm doing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's a good What's thing. What's going to happen when you actually start to learn even more and get better? Are you going to I'm just look gonna even ditch shitter? I'm going to ditch the clothes. Yeah, oh, my God. When I'm, when I'm really up there and I'm like, right, I'm at the top of my game, I'm just going to turn up to events yeah. in my pants. And be like, I don't need to, don't need to yeah, trick that, anyone that'll now. That'll scare people off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've been talk- we, we were talking about the... Um, business breakfasty network mm, and things mm. which are quite common for people when they're starting out and not just starting out like they yeah i think a lot of businesses find them useful forever but do you is it actually something that you think was positive for our business like if we started again do you think do you think we do i yeah, know i good question and i'd say yes because looking back you know like we're looking back now we're working with bigger brands and we're looking back oh that was a load of shit but really at that moment in time really small we needed those small businesses to to kind of work with and we did get some business from it definitely i'd say over the years but um and it helped us meet people as well it helped us get connected what what i would do differently is i'd go in with a different mindset i'd go in with the mindset that i've got now that i'm not going there to try and sell anyone anything i'm going there to build relationships and mm. and just sort of make friends which sounds well cringy but yeah i was just about to say no that no but that. i know that sounds cringy but it genuinely is if you go there without the intention of selling stuff but to on the other side so you're saying oh oh i would just go to networking events to make friends and like so if you if you didn't have this business would you still go then because you're just going to make friends and build relationships so we're not we're not trying to sell stuff no no no. you're you're obviously going with the intention of building relationships that are going to hopefully eventually convert into business but it's it's the the way you go about it and Mm -hmm. we through experience we now know that when you you're good at what you do and you build the right relationships and genuine relationships over time that connection a percentage of those will convert into business so we don't now like for like an example right so you and i are going are flying out to social media marketing world Ooh. at the uh end of when are we going end of feb end of february yeah because i'm speaking there in san diego and we and we had a discussion about this and do you we, know what san diego actually means have you watched anchorman n- no what is it oh uh, oh it's something about killing dolphins or something <laughs> Is it actually? I'll just quickly get it. In Anchorman, he says that San Diego actually means whale's vagina. Oh, right. But, but it doesn't. But because you didn't get the reference, it, it's just it's just not funny, and yeah, we're just yeah, still yeah. talking about it. Why don't you explain it a bit further? Yeah, yeah, okay. Right, keep going. Oh, you've, you've put me off track now. Then we're going to social media marketing. Yeah, we're going to social media marketing, marketing world, world, and we've... we've it's, it's quite a big investment of time and, and things for us, um, it, like both a week out of the business, and, and we both kind of spoke to each other and said... What's our objective for going? Should mm. we be trying to go out there with this game plan of like meeting certain people and mm. building relationships? And really, we the main value we're getting from the event, we we agreed, is the kind of credibility of speaking there. So yeah. it's what the, the probably the world's in our biggest, industry, most well known, kind of the leading, leading event. Yeah, yeah. To speak and, at. and that's really the value that we know we're getting from it. Did you say you're speaking at the event, by the way? Yes, I did. Okay. say that. Yeah, I'm speaking. Okay. Just just clarification. Um, and Lloyd's just coming. He's carrying my bags. Yeah, I'll carry bags. If, if Dan wants any drinks or food, he just kind of clicks his fingers yeah, and yeah. I run around. So, here you go, your majesty. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you're you're coming as well. And we we know that, we really said it, it is a bit of a jolly as well for us. We, we're going... We, well, it's a nice thing to do, you know. You, you can't, sent a link to that baseball game. that might go to a yeah. baseball game. That looks well good. I guess you can't... Yeah, you can't say, oh, obviously we're working. It's a work event, but we're flying to San Diego. I'm going to San Diego for a week. Mm. So... That and we're doing be... a shout out to Quick CC and uh, Content Cow who are hosting a party bus on bus the Saturday. Part, yeah, that'll be good. That we're doing. Um, if my wife's listening, that still counts as work. Having a party <laughs> on a bus. No, Lloyd, we're networking on the bus. Oh, networking. So, yeah. yeah, so I guess the difference is 
We'll, by the way, if anyone fancies a trip to San Diego, we'll put a link somewhere mm. um, for tickets. It, yeah. it is. It will be an affiliate link, so we do get two hundred dollars. So yeah. buy your yeah. ticket there. Do we actually? Yeah, we do. Do you oh. know that? Oh, oh actually, I, maybe buy I shouldn't, right, I shouldn't reveal the exact amount. Let's we get. sell this. Okay, maybe it's three hundred. Maybe it's one hundred. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess the difference, because yeah, my question was, you were saying, oh, it's just about building relationships. I guess. I guess it is because when you get first start your business, you go to those networking events, you're kind mm. of thinking short term, like I need to sell to this person now. I'm going to chuck my business cards out yeah. and force them to take my business card because I need them to buy mm. now. Whereas I guess when you're further in your business, you you get to know that the long term mm. game of actually just genuinely meeting people and, and building genuine relationships works. And also, I guess that's, the- also it's, that's just one part should be just one part of your strategy like one touch point is networking so Mm. for us like yeah we meet people networking build relationships we usually then connect with them on social and then we've got this whole strategy through creating Mm. content that attracts convinces and converts them into customers yeah and plus all these other streams of activity that we're doing Mm. building our website making it so people want to buy from us so you know we shouldn't be thinking we're just going to meet people and try and convert them that's just one yeah. sort of element to get them in small, in our small element ecosystem yeah, yeah. oh good that word. was a good word wasn't it yeah and then uh and then from there the, the whole other strategy kicks in of yeah yeah so i've got one last kind of question on the whole businessy networking Go thing on before i chuck my business card at you <laughs> um did you so so starting out mm. did you enjoy it Forget um, the business, oh, we're going to sell this or we're going to get this benefit. Did you actually enjoy I going? Elements. I think initially it was just that I have to do this so I didn't even consider mm. if I enjoyed it or not. It was like, what I really want is the business to grow and to get business, so mm. I have to do it. I did enjoy, like looking really back early on, there was a couple of people when I first went to my first sort of small mm. networking event, there was a couple of people that really made an effort to be nice to me. Yeah. And you could tell they were so genuine and so nice and it just made me feel good inside really them yeah. showing an interest even so, a bit of encouragement i guess you know yeah. they're not interested in your in, in buying no. from you or working with you but and i'm still connected with some of the, and i see yeah. i went to the pub the other week and there was a bloke who i used to go networking with like five years ago and i was mm. like oh you're right yeah good to see you because he was really nice and encouraging and stuff so i enjoyed elements but eventually it kind of got into a bit of a oh for fuck's sake i've got to go to this thing yeah. on a, you know every week and i don't mm. want to be there mm. what about you i enjoyed eating the breakfast i bet um, yeah you can tell but no i i in a way i got i enjoyed i met a, a lot of nice people mm. um some not so nice but i met a lot of mm. nice people can you can you name the ones you didn't like um yeah so <laughs> i was gonna make up a name before it might be close to someone that <laughs> yeah. i actually met no, there wasn't many that I didn't like, but I guess the, the people that I, I felt negatively towards were people that were either really didn't make, you know, you just said about the person making an effort. And yeah. There are people that really, I remember you, telling me about you walk into a room and they, they obviously think they're a big dog and they're yeah. really impressive yeah, yeah. and kind of just Your little Lloyd in his suit. Yeah. I remember even recently, well, not say recently, probably a couple of years ago, I was at an event and this guy uh basically was looking through me like to try and find someone more <laughs> important and this was when i actually was start to know what i was doing so i wasn't dressed formally and i think yeah. that was what what he got thought, him he oh. thought who's this guy in a t-shirt and he it was, yeah. you know just acted as if i wasn't there and then i started talking about some of the clients we were working with and things we were doing and then suddenly his ears pricked up he, and thought, he wanted Ooh. to be my best mate and i just think, think if, if all your yeah at the end of the day you've got to be a we're oh don't people. say authentic no, do no, not say authentic gonna, again say authentic i was gonna <laughs> i was gonna say a nice person then oh, I realized okay. that was, but like <laughs> yeah i don't know going to these events and just thinking what's going to be positive for my business yeah I, I think does make you a bit of a i think just the phrase don't be a dick yeah should, i know that's very mm. simple but you should just follow that mantra yeah. shouldn't you but yeah so i did um met some really nice people enjoyed it but i think to be honest i was more looking back when i was doing it regularly mm. i think i was more doing it trying to be busy like, <laughs> as in i thought if i do this twice a week i'm doing something positive yeah. and i'm putting the effort in whereas i don't know could i've been doing something more useful possibly but yeah. it made me feel like right i'm getting out of bed i'm going to this thing at six in the morning and i'm I'd honestly the, if the you're just in. starting out in business i would i can't recommend it highly enough i remember dad said to me his his one bit of advice when i started mm. out 
years ago was you got to get out of the office at least twice a week because I was doing all this stuff on mm. social media and I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing good stuff. But he was like, you need to meet people. And that yeah. was my trigger to think, shit, I actually do because it's no sad. matter how interested people are from looking at you online, yeah. there's there's nothing kind of more solid than actually mm. meeting them face to face. And you, you get to know if someone's not a twat and if they're actually a nice person, if they're good at what they do, yeah. way easier and th- if you meet them face to face, don't you? I agree. It's, uh, yeah, just be authentic. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're going to move on now to a mm-hmm. segment called, uh, well, this week it's going to be called Dan's an Anchor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so some of you may know that Dan's a complete business anchor. Yep. Um, but each week we're going to maybe talk about something that we're not overly happy with the other one that they've been doing. I'm intrigued what this is. We, um, we Obviously, Dan, Dan and I work together every day. We've grown a business together over the last few years. We're still growing a business together. And we're brothers. Mm. Sometimes, one of us is a bit of an anchor. Mm. Mainly Dan. Um, so this week, I'm going to talk about something. We, so, so this happened this week, and we, we just didn't even talk about it or acknowledge it happened. Oh, I know. I think I know what you're going to say. So oh, uh, Dan's got a habit of uh, putting permanent markers next to the whiteboard. Um, so obviously, this is probably about the fourth time now that I go to write on the whiteboard and realise I'm writing in permanent marker because it, it's literally on on the whiteboard. <laughs> and so for, oh, for about now. the fifth time, I went up to Dan and I said, uh, "Put the permanent marks on his desk." And I said, "Dan, can you don't, pl- don't act as if you said it all nicely. You said it in a strop." Um, Dan, uh, this part of the segment is where I'm actually <laughs> talking about you being an anchor. Sorry, Luke. That's okay. Um, so I put the pens on his desk and I said. Can you please not put permanent markers next to the whiteboard? Maybe slightly more passive aggressive than I just said it then. <laughs> and um, Dan just looked at me, picks up the pens that I, I put there because I was hoping he'd put them away. And he just put them on top of a shelf somewhere. And I was like, oh, that's, that's annoying. So I. <laughs> well, then um, what did you do, Lloyd? Then I, um, <laughs> I completely rationally and, and logically um, threw the pens at Dan's feet where he was sitting at the desk. <laughs> Um, and walked away and then I saw as I was walking away Dan was just kicking the pens <laughs> away from his desk we did so, so much very children. very very immature um, <laughs> from both sides but obviously mainly Dan is in the wrong oh. so uh, Dan firstly do you have any defence about leaving permanent markers next to the whiteboard and secondly wh- why did you act like such a child I mean, my that's... defence is I, I probably think it was our dad when he came or, or I might just blame Ida for this one someone else other than me that put them there so I initially didn't think it was me. Definitely not. But um, yeah, I think I was busy. I was like, I had my head down doing something. So, and you just put them on my desk and I was like, fuck off. <laughs> okay. So I think uh, the listeners, um, you know, we've, we've decided now, me and the listeners, that it was definitely Dan <laughs> being an anchor and not me. And, can't wait uh, for next week when I can say some of the rubbish stuff you do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I can't even think of just choosing one. There's so much stuff. Is there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, fine. I look forward to hearing it. As I said, the listeners have decided that was definitely <laughs> something that you did badly that really affected our business and uh, personal relationship negatively. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, nice. moving on. Moving on. So that was Dan's an anchor. Um, oh, I went, um, I go, radio I feel like again. I go a bit DJ. Yeah. Mm. yeah like, uh, so now we're moving on to, uh, that was great listening to the Baja men who let the dogs out. <laughs> um, so this is something I wanted to talk about. It's the we get a lot of phone calls to do with this because <sighs> I don't know if you know guys, but Dan's basically an influencer. So uh, he no, influencer. <laughs> no, Dan speaks at a lot of business events um, around UK and the world, but we get a lot of these calls where people want us to pay to speak at their events, which I don't really get. But yeah, What's well, it? it's actually it's not. It's you. Can I just the the way it normally works? Because they normally mm-hmm. contact me. Is they start with a um, we're looking for speakers for our events, and uh, we, Ooh, we sounds we, interesting. We really good. want we really want you to come and speak at our event. Oh, you uh, like me? Okay, good. And then um, it's actually an event I'm going to name in shame because I'll, I'll name and shame them at the end, so you listen, okay. so you don't switch off. But this, this event, so literally. I'd say four years ago. So a year in, I'd spoken at a couple, a couple few events. This event messaged me on LinkedIn and it was a big, it's a big event when you hear which event it is. They messaged me saying, Dan, we've, we've seen you speaking at other things and we really want you to speak at our event. And 
obviously i instantly was <laughs> yeah, like yeah tell oh me my more. god like we're gonna our <laughs> business is gonna go through the roof so they were like so so jump on a call jump on a call so we we uh we got on a call and i was and they were like did you we, jump on it we jumped on the call yeah and um we they were i was like speaking to them they're like look we've seen what you're speaking at this event looks really good we've got this big event called i'll tell you in a minute um and uh look uh, look it up looked it up i was like geez that's a big event in london that looks insane um, I was like, yeah, brilliant. They're like, yeah, yeah, so you want to speak? Yeah, yeah. Um, and at that point, I think I was speaking for free. So I wasn't mm-hmm. charged, we weren't charging for mm-hmm. me to speak just because it was good awareness for us. So yeah. I was like, sweet, yeah, I'd like to speak. And then they're like, brilliant, brilliant. So um, what you need to do is you need to um, pay for an, an ex- exhibition stand, which is like two and a half grand, and then you can speak. And I was like, Sorry, and I literally this phone call had gone on for forty five minutes where he'd been buttering me up. Oh no! And you know, like early on when you don't really know what you at that point I hadn't had much experience of this, so I was like, oh, brilliant. No, but I don't think it's necessarily not knowing what you're doing. If if someone is calling you and saying they want you to speak at an event, why would you think they're trying to sell you exhibition space? I, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that could. Anyway, so I eventually sort of said, oh, oh, okay, no, we don't, we don't do exhibiting or anything. Mm. We don't. So thank you, but um, no, so. I then, literally a few weeks later, I then got another message from another person on LinkedIn, looked at their title, it's like marketing person for the same event. Mm. Um, Hi Dan, we've seen you speaking in the... Um, so I ignored it. Got a phone call from at the office, mm. this different lady, the same intro, literally it was a script that yeah. they've got. Yeah. I was like, um, Dave, your mate, uh, called me the other day and Shout did this whole Dave. spiel. And um, sorry, and I, obviously I sound like I'm being a twat. I was being very polite. I was very polite. Mm. Dave called me. Can you take me off your sort of list of people mm. to um, sell to? Right. <laughs> Four years later, I'd say once every two months. Mm. Uh, more recently, I've got a whole influx of more of them. Uh, they've just started this whole thing again, messaging mm. me on LinkedIn. They've they've obviously got a whole marketing strategy where they message mm. you on LinkedIn, and um, it is the b2b marketing expo in london if you're listening and you work for them please i i i eventually replied to this guy and said look i screenshotted all these other people that have the same Mm. scripted message please stop sending this to me i called them and again and i've said please stop trying to do this it's just it looks so i actually really don't like your event now because you're just so i think that just to be clear that it's not it's not negative about people selling an event or, or trying to reach out to find speakers. It's fair enough. Like lots of companies um, have strategies through LinkedIn to, to connect with people that they might want to do business with. But I think it's the it's the way, the way they're trying to deceive you. Deceive you. So it, yeah. and, and there are some other kind of industries and ways people do this. It's not just event speaking, but where they they contact you and speak to you for a long time about how they would are interested in something you provide a service you provide Mm -hmm. whatever product you provide but then um then after you it's all going really well sounds really interesting at the end then they then they make it clear actually by the way this has all just been a a ploy to get you ploy we actually are going to sell you this thing yeah we're not trying we're not in formula one racing company did that to us like some kind yeah. of company involved in that and mm. i remember being on the phone for 40 minutes yeah they were like we we want we're looking for video production paid mm. social campaign i was like brilliant this is everything we do mm. a formula one and then it got to the end and then they said can we send you our our brochure of uh you know to be involved in this as a sponsor and i'm like yeah if you literally just take surely no one ever converts through that strategy well, no, imagine if we were contacting people saying mm. like oh we'd love to we'd love to buy your um you know business thing office thing whatever it is product <laughs> Great example. We're, we're really interested can we meet you we meet them and say oh that looks great um have you ever thought about using us to market yeah. your product like but i do think then i think don't forget you're so you're in a fortunate position now where you get paid to speak at events which is a really fortunate not you know there's lots of people that would like to do that mm. and only certain people manage to get to the level where they where you start getting paid because mm. it's a hard thing to crack but people that are trying to climb that ladder if you get a call and someone's really showing major interest in you being a speaker at this huge event in mm. London and you, so far you've just spoken at little events and then they sort of say to you, oh, by the way, um, minimum would be £1,500 exhibition stand, but you'll get a speaker slot. I think pe- it, it rubs people's ego the right way mm. of thinking, oh, they want me to speak. Okay, yeah, yeah, they're, mm. they're really interested in me speaking. Plus it gives them an opportunity of the, bigger than they've ever had to speak at yeah. an event. Um, and then they, I think people justify it to themselves thinking, oh, well, yeah. this might be a good thing, me exhibiting at this event. So 
But I think that's the the next thing that I don't like about this. Mm. After the thing that's frustrating mainly for you, Dan, mm. with this whole thing, because you get these calls mm. and they're just lying to you, basically, mm. is I don't. When you have events where the speakers are paying to be there, the people exhibiting are paying to be there, I find there's very little value for the attendees of the event. because yep. the, So it's not like, uh, you know, we, we go to a lot of events that are brilliant. It's not like something where they've put together these really brilliant speakers. Mm. So the people that are going are going to get to hear these great mm. speakers, going to learn a lot, going to really enjoy it. It's going to be entertaining. Basically, they're... It's, there's no vetting of speakers. It's if you pay me a certain mm-hmm. amount, mm-hmm. you can speak at the mm-hmm. event. So people don't realize this. They go to these events. They go to see these speakers. And it's just a some sales them, pitch. Or... Some of them, are, a lot of people, I think, are naive to this because they're mm. not in this kind of world. Mm. And then, yeah, there's no value to the attendees because it's just a sales pitch because mm. they thought, well, I've paid, I've paid two grand to be here, so mm. I'm going to sell my services on this stage. They're not, yeah. You're not going to learn anything. Um, and I just think if there's no... The only value is... For the organizers so they mm. they're making the money, money from the event and i would say the people exhibiting but i also find these events where people are exhibiting i always find it's a bit strange because surely no one goes to these events to buy stuff <laughs> you're all just there trying to sell to each other <laughs> like yeah. you're all paid to be there i've got this stand do you want this uh no not really do you want my thing no not really <laughs> Um, do you want to do you want to hear me speak of that? No, not really, yeah. but I will because otherwise I have to sta- stand there <laughs> yeah. over at this stand. We've never done exhibiting, have we? Really? No. I think we've been given a free stand. Yeah, we've, stuff we've helped out. We've with just the kind of put, friends that have put events on, but but other than that, yeah, we're never. It, yeah, yeah, I'd be interested to hear if anyone's had a lot of success. I'm sure there yeah. is people that have had success. With, yeah. If you're yeah. if you're watching this or listening to this somewhere, please. Uh, comment on our social media let us know if because surely it must be successful for people right people pay for these exhibition yeah. stands it how, must how, be, yeah. have you ever bought anything from an exhibit stand never <laughs> I, i've got free free coffees pens, free sweets free pens hand squidgy stress balls yeah but that's this is what i mean no one goes there to buy so i think you have to be very good at sales to mm. to sell something because yeah everyone's going there doing their networking thing and trying to sell themselves but not say that they're selling yeah. themselves like, oh no i'm just here to yeah to build relationships and have a nice breakfast yeah um but yeah it's mm. i would imagine it'd be really hard but i would be interested to hear if people yeah. actually do have success mm. but um so dan a question for you go would you ever pay to speak at an event my, Ooh, my, my, he, he had a little my knee there. jerk reaction was to say no, but then I just thought, I just thought, is there any scenario where I'm just thinking of like the world's greatest event that all of our potential customers would go to and listen to who speaks and want to become a customer just because they're speaking. Mm. But I can't really, I think the ones that the leading ones, we, we already kind of either speak at or want to apply to speak at. I, I don't think mm. I ever would. Hmm. My, my, I was just my instant answer would have been hell no, but I was trying to think more on of a balanced view. Yeah. Is there actually any scenarios? Yeah. I can't really think of any. Can you? No. No, I don't think so. I guess yeah. If I mean, I've never heard of this event, but if there was an event where these huge world speakers were there and they were like, oh, by the way, Dan, if you if you want to give us five hundred quid, you can get on this lineup. <laughs> yeah, I, guess, I guess it would be tempting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but. But we're just making up scenarios that don't <laughs> exist to try and think of yeah. reasons why we would. Yeah. But yeah, it's no obviously nothing against people that have paid to speak. But mm. I just think it's hard because I think at the end of the day, there's very little value for the people attending the mm. event and little value for the people speaking because yeah. they've lost out financially to have that position on that stage. Mm. When that you know sometimes you look at these things and there's only like four people in the audience. You do better by speaking at smaller events for free where people want to actually where people want you. to be there and actually mm. providing value on stage rather than that's a yeah. whole other we should do a whole topic around yeah, yeah. podcast around speak on stage yeah. and stuff i think it'd be interesting because a lot of people obviously do um mm. like to you know want to speak get mm. paid to speak and stuff and it's one of those things that is really hard to it's a bit of yeah. a like a mystery like there's people that get you know lucky enough to get paid to speak like mm. you and obviously the the big big names that get paid huge amounts remember i wasn't getting paid to speak for years but yeah i think well the, it's a bit of a mystery a that, anyway. that path in how yeah. to get there let's do a podcast on that yeah okay all right if you'd like to hear that then uh <laughs> <laughs> i might i don't know why i default into radio dj yeah. but um 
As we're talking about radio DJs, uh, this um, this week's episode is sponsored by businesscardgun.com. Don't you hate it when you're at a business event and some people are just not interested in taking your business card? Well, the, with this device, you can sell to them all and fire your business card up to 63 metres to ensure everyone gets your card and, of course, immediately wants to buy from you. That's businesscardgun.com. Use promo code BUYMYSTUFF for 97% off. Um, <laughs> so... I can't believe we got a sponsor on our first yeah, episode. Yeah, and a completely genuine sponsor on the first episode. Yeah. Well, shout out to businesscardgun.com. For That's actually quite a good idea as well. Yeah, 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 really good. I mean, we sh- we're we going to buy a couple. I don't know if maybe they can send us a couple. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going to up our sales. Um, good. So finally, we've been... I feel like we've been a bit negative about business yeah. events. I feel like I don't want to make a podcast where balance. we just shit on everything. Yeah. So... So... Because also, well, I suppose we have spoken about the positives, like the whole breakfasty networking things. There were definitely mm. some positives. When we're starting out, you meet new people. Mm. Even if you don't actually financially gain, I think the confidence of talking about your business, what you do, and actually, your services. Actually, that's a really good point. You, mm. you, gain, you, you gain good skills, like yeah. in terms of making yourself stand up and speak in front of people. Mm. That's a really good point, actually. I never thought of that. Because like we said, you know those... that. 60 seconds when you stand up and you have to mm. say oh my business does this and mm. uh, get in touch if you I think having that practice of actually when someone says so what do you do yeah knowing what to say so, yeah. it making sense and yeah. making it interesting I remember shitting my pants when I did that for the first time yeah. did you yeah mm. yeah a couple of times horrible, I stumbled as well <laughs> and it's gone. Uh, that was when, back when we were called so we're now our agency is now called Knowlton for anyone that's interested but um, if you want to buy our stuff then please yeah, buy our stuff Knowlton <laughs> Oh, uh, for the listeners, I just fired a business card gun at the camera. Uh, uh, but yeah, when I was standing up, hi, oh, we're KPS Digital Marketing. We're uh, digital marketing. And then your mind goes blank. Uh, okay, KPS. Uh, uh, you just keep saying the business yeah, name. And then, and then you see, see the person that's kind of got the timer that stops everyone going over 60 seconds, kind of st- going to stand up. You go, yeah, yeah, just if you want a meeting, come over. <laughs> And that's the end of it. And it's like, oh God. Then you're, you're kind of, uh, you're sweating in your, your formal yeah, yeah. suit and shirt because you've got that on because you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And then it's yeah. like, goes around to the next people and you're just sitting there thinking, oh, thank no God. one in this room respects me. <laughs> <laughs> and they still don't. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, I, I so completely the, the practice in that, like communicating about your business, having the confidence. What you're, yeah. And also, if you're talking to people about stuff you do and literally no one's interested, I think kind of, realizing oh i might need to tweak change this and i change had that i had that when i first started because mm. i went into it just talking about myself and yeah we do this we do this like you do in your personal life <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no and then i oh this was six years ago lloyd yeah um and then i sort of thought oh you know i need to actually be interested in other people and yeah. then i just pretended to be interested in other people yeah. to generate business for us what you gotta do then is just be authentic <laughs> No, but I no, but I, I. It was just a learning curve. It's a it's a mm. steep learning curve. Yeah, you go there with the expectations of you're going to this thing to win business, so that's what you should be focused on. When really, yeah. you should flip on its head. Um, and also like away from those businessy networking things, like we still go to really good events, mm. you know, in the UK and different countries that mm. you'd speak at, but also ones that we just attend. There are genuinely some. What tell us? Brilliant. I'm, I'm interested events. here. What are your top? Give me like your a few top three events or situations that we've been in at events or so are you talking about like how fun i found them or like how much i've learned what what a, angle well, we going a balance, for? A balance. Balance. okay so I, i've got one that i'm gonna say after you go first okay. Lloyd. so i um uh, I, one that comes to mind straight away by the way people that organize events and we're friends with i'm really sorry if i forget your event i probably really like it but i'm <laughs> just these are just the ones coming to my head so the one that i really liked was i bet you're gonna say that one gonna say Engage yes that's Prague. what i was gonna so, say uh, there's social bakers. Um, I won't try and describe what they do because I'll probably shout get out it wrong. social bakers. But social bakers are a brilliant company. I think they're based in Prague, aren't they? But they've got offices yeah. around the world. They're actually and providing some data for my talk in so- a social media marketing world. So thanks, oh, social bakers. Thanks, and thank. I really like. Um, Cl- is it Claire? Claire. Social- Claire's or shout out to Claire because she's, she's yeah bloody lovely. We had such a good time. Um, but yeah, they're the kind of production value of their mm. events. So it was like. It was like they put on a show. It was like mm. you're going to a concert and like yeah. the lighting and they had dancers and and in between all that, the the flashy mm. stuff 
was actually really genuinely mm. interesting speakers, really yeah. good speakers. There's a really good panel hosted by what's his name? Uh, oh, that was hosted by Dan Knowlton, oh, I yeah. think, wasn't it? Yeah, he was. He was. Oh God, hosted that panel brilliantly. Lol. But um, yeah, really and interesting those balls, speakers. Those they had balls. Ashley. The balls above the. Oh yeah. Do you remember yeah, those? Dan's just Dan. Oh, that's just a <laughs> night out. Dan had the balls above my above my above my face. These balls lit up and they moved all around. Yeah, yeah. Terrible description on a podcast. I mean, no one knows what they are, but they were good. Balls on string yeah. over the whole stage that drops at different angles to make it look like a wave forming. Yeah. Is that all right, Lloyd? Yeah, it's still not great, but it's all right. Okay. Um, but yeah, speakers like Ashley Codiani from CNN. She was so nice. Kind of like having speakers from huge enterprises mm. like that. Um, and she was a lovely person. And we did an interview with her, which is on our blog and our yeah. YouTube. You should go yeah. look at it. Yeah. But that was just overall brilliant. Like if someone said, oh, I want to go to an event somewhere in mm-hmm. Europe, you know, engage Prague. But they do them all over the world, mm. actually, don't they? I think they do one in London, possibly. I'm not yeah. Sure. There was one in Paris. Yeah, I that think. was brilliant. So that's one. Mm. Um, I actually, um, you've spoken at a couple of Janet Murray's events. Yeah. And I always think she put so much effort into making sure that the attendees get the most value possible mm. so really good speakers and also um just all the little details to make sure they mm. they have the best experience i think mm. janet's really good at that so shout out to janet murray mm-hmm. um and one i've really enjoyed and learned stuff from we've been going for years is social day is yeah it? one shout uh, out again to Lucy really Stewart so, the, yeah Hello, hi, Lucy yeah um I think the main thing for me at those events that's brilliant is the speakers normally. Mm. Um, I haven't looked at this year. Has it been announced I don't think yet? they've announced oh, this. Okay. But we are go- we're going up. Yeah. I know I'm actually You're on holiday. holiday. Maybe I'll be able to oh, go. Yeah. But um, yeah, the speakers are normally really a good variety and interesting. Mm. Um, I'm hoping they, they ask Chris Covey to come back because he's really good. And You've I got some little Chris man Covey. crush on him, haven't you? Yeah, I do. I genuinely do. It's really do. weird. Yeah, no, but I think I uh, do. You, you watch him on Instagram stories. Yeah, stuff, no, right? I've, I've, it's really interesting. Really Chris Kelly nice following his uh, his kind of business journey. Yeah, it's really cool. But yeah, so they they'd be my three that really come to mind and make me think. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Have you got any? My ones are mainly uh, the the most fun I have is when it's not to do with business or anything like that. It's just <laughs> where you basically get hammered and have a well good time with loads of people. But I liked um, Atomicon was wicked. Oh crap! I know, um, Andrew and Pete. I'd just like to uh, <laughs> I'd say what I meant. The first one I meant to say was Atomicon. Oh, sh- that, that was basically yeah. they they started this event for the first time last year and it had so good. loads of people go and it was wicked and yeah. we we had such a good night out. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, it was just really well put together, mm. wasn't it? And we're both I, speaking this year yeah, as well. And I do think tickets are still available for that. That's I think at the start of April. Oh, I can't remember exactly. But. Andrew and Pete, wherever you see this, comment and say, "Oh, this is the date." But just search Atomic. But yeah, I would. That was that would be one. I would say, especially if you're like, if you're someone starting a business on your own, mm. or you've maybe got a small team of people. I think you can learn so much from their events. Um, mm. And with Andrew and Pete, you just know it's going to be fun. Mm. We we like went to the first the evening thing, and there was just people dancing on stilts, yeah, yeah, yeah. eating fire. And when an event starts like that, you know it's yeah. going to be good. Another one I randomly, which we went to once, was uh, which we had so much fun at, was the On The Tools Awards. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, we got invited once, didn't get invited back. So thank yeah, you guys. Um, so, so guys, for whatever we did Adam to Lee, offend you and Andy. not get asked, asked back, we apologise. Um, Can you invite us we, back, please? We had a great time. We actually, we ended up, um, <laughs> do you remember, we, were in a ho- we, got, we were basically out till the early hours, yeah. went back to the hotel room. We had a train booked at like nine or something. Alarm went off at f- five to nine or something silly. And we basically just went, shit, and just ran out of the... Ran, ran out the hotel room, left the camera bag in the hotel room with thousands of pounds worth, <laughs> thousands of, pounds worth of equipment. And just got the train down without our camera equipment yeah. and left it in the hotel. Yeah. yeah, That was a good one. Um, well, I'll tell you what, the, the, you weren't there, mm. which made it even better. But the digi- Digitalium in Romania, mm, that you, know, you, good. you know you talked about production value at Engage Prague. Mm. This this one was like on another level. Yeah. Um, it was, yeah, they had like a whole huge production team and mm. it's, like, it's like a show, like you mm. mentioned, it's kind of like a show's. I just realised that these events we've been describing are very different from the, the breakfast networking events oh, yeah. that we started with, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. don't, don't spend £20 and have a breakfast with 12 people from your local area. <laughs> Go to Prague, or go <laughs> yeah. to <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, so finally, 
final question, Dan. Yeah. What would you, do you have any advice to, for people like if they're starting out in business mm. or got a business and you're not starting out and just want to mm. go to a good event where you're going to learn something and meet good mm. people, how, how do you identify the good ones and the bad ones? I think first of all, you've got to know um, that you need to be going and meeting people. So that like, I know you've just said that's a given Lloyd, mm. but first of all, don't go to events with no people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need to be going to these events. Secondly, think about um, what your objective for, for going to the event is. You know, mm. yes, we all want to generate more business, but there might be other things like, is there other people you want to collaborate with and build relationships mm. with to help you eventually reach new audiences and grow your business? Mm. You know, think of what your objective is and then find events that tick those boxes. So like mm. do your research and think if your number one objective is to um, generate clients, then look for events where your customers are going. Like, do some research. Even reach out to event organizers and say, like we mentioned Janet Murray's event earlier, mm. if you're thinking of uh, meeting people in the marketing space because yeah. you sell uh, social media software, message Janet Murray and say, hey, Janet, we sell this software. Do people that buy this software go to your event? Or mm. message Andrew and Pete, who run Atomicon. Or, mm. Yeah. You know. um, so think of your objective and then work backwards. Mm. Um, and also... Uh, this whole thing of don't feel bad if if one of the main objectives is to have fun i think yeah. i know i keep saying these kind of fluffy things but i think we have such a good time and probably generate some of the, build some of the best relationships that have the biggest impact on our business when we go to an event and just have fun and yeah i mean drink if, loads if, of if you end people. up having a couple of drinks after an event maybe even more than a couple if you're a bit naughty <laughs> um <laughs> the chances are you're going to build a good relationship with the people that you're around when you've had a few drinks. You're being honest and, and Don't say the words. Do not say the word. Being <laughs> authentic. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. What about you? What? Like, um, why would... What tips have you got? Just be authentic. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> no, I think you've covered it all there. Yeah. So, I think on that note... Um, Wherever you are watching or listening to this podcast, thank you so much because this is the first one. Really appreciate you. And you made it to the end. But we are, we're, we've got £100 to give away, Dan. Have we? We've got £100 to give away. Oh, have we? Okay, go on. I've made the executive <laughs> decision. Uh, if you, wherever you're watching or listening, if you can go to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, if you um, subscribe and review the podcast, we're going to put you in a draw to win £100. Does it, and does it have to be card. a five-star review, Lloyd? Or is that illegal? Um, I, I, don't, I don't think to... <laughs> to be in line with the platform's guidelines I don't think we can demand a five star review right. so we'll, we'll even put but you in if it's a low review we just won't like you <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're going to give away a hundred pound Amazon gift card to someone random and I'm going to put something else out there Go on then. everyone that subscribes and reviews mm. I'm going to send you a personalised video message Ooh, I like could that. be anything it could be just me uh, me saying uh, giving you a compliment it could, could be, be a dick pic could <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, no, it won't be. Don't worry. Um, oh, God, I've got horrible dick But they actually need to head. put their link to their Twitter or Insta or something in so you well, can no, do that. I, what, or you, will you just I was going to put so much effort in, I'm going to hunt you down. Oh, okay. So I'm going to I'm going to. hunt I'm intrigued. you down. Can I leave a review and get a video from you? Yeah. Okay, cool. And will I be a chance to win this 100 quid? Well, probably not, Dan. I think okay. that's a bit unfair to okay. the listeners. But yeah, so subscribe and review on spotify or apple podcast it would really help us we'd absolutely love it if you could and we hope you enjoyed this also any feedback we would love it so if there's certain parts of this you've really mm. enjoyed or certain parts you didn't enjoy um please let us know because we want to make it's it only better, get better. Time. this is going to be our shittest podcast ever mm. that's the way we work whenever we do things we think this is always going to be the shittest one because we are always going to improve and on that note i hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, and we'll finish this with a bit of ASMR. Ooh. Oh, enjoy, enjoy your commute or your or your weekly podcast listening. Um, don't forget to subs- subs- <laughs> don't subscribe. forget to subscribe, leave a review. Could get a hundred quid. Thank you. Good night. Bye.